The price paid to get to the top of this form of motorsports is a big one. Not only in new equipment, but in spent equipment. It was on finals weekend where the attrition of a long season sets in, especially for those who run the biggest horsepower in the sport. Finals weekend continues here at the MRA Championship Series from the Upper Merrimack region of the Show Me State. Booker Farms just outside of Steelville, Missouri, ready now for the fifth and final round for our modified paddle class. That's what we will start today's action with, and it's already been a wild weekend just in one uh, round with the uh, OPS division. We will also be running the open cut class a little bit later. Those will be coming up in uh, just a moment. Right now, though, starting with those modified paddle vehicles, Shane O'Rogi leading the charge driving a vehicle he won a championship with, actually a few championships with, now under the ownership of Greg Martinez. He leads the charge over Rick George, Caleb Dunsavage, Keith Mitchell, and Joel Coolidge there. You see rounding out the top five and three of those five cars were built by uh, the O'Rogi family out of Wisconsin as we get ready to go now with our first vehicle coming to the line. It will be Keith Mitchell, the Keystone Killer out of Fredonia, Pennsylvania in the Magician. 900 plus cubic inch Sonny's power plant with a four stage nitrous kit. And always say he's got four stages nitrous. He will likely only use two. And this is a massive power plant in the back of this thing. He's matched in horsepower by the guy who will be pulling up after him with a brand new vehicle who really has been impressive this year, but here is a guy on the line right now, Keith Mitchell, who I believe has a championship on his horizon. Maybe next year, if he can just get this thing refigured, he has had a tough season so far, a lot of rough rides for him, but he always keeps the shiny side up, hasn't lost any corners, and we'll see what he does here for the first run of the night. for it all at 297 for Keith Mitchell as he had problems clearly on the run. Machine took a hard right after coming off the line, coming right out from between the lights and you can see it turn right on him again. Wisely backs on the throttle, gets back in it once he straightens out, tries to salvage the run to get a little data, but it's not really gonna be anything he can use. He'll come back in session two. We'll see what he can do there, but uh, heads up driving for him to keep it off of that uh, tough concrete block over here near our cameras. You do not want to get into that. Now, 959 cubic inch uh, Billy Albert power plant in the back of Shoot to Thrill, one of the racing in the dirt built machines out here this weekend. Rick George looking to dominate. Trying to get out of the number two spot. and He's been looking good since he had a rough uh, opening weekend in Florida. But once they got this thing figured out, you can see he's right there where he needs to be at 233 for his opening run. Remember, they'll come back for a second session and try to better whatever they did in this session. And keep in mind, every time these guys go down the track, they're shooting for national record uh, territory. If you can get in that national record territory, you'll likely be at the top of the heap. Gene Cruz now rolling out, the president of Second Rate Racing. I mean, 800 plus cubic inch Billy Albert power plant, front engine machine, bad intentions out of Richmond, Kentucky. Lines up alongside a legendary family in the sport, Caleb Dunsav, second generation driver. You see his father, Ronnie, and his brother there lining him up. That's Color Me Gone. Home built machine, 762 cubic inch Chevrolet engine making right around uh, 2,200 horsepower with nitrous. Both of them kicking cones. In fact, Cruz runs over the uh, reflectors for the timing system at the end of the track. That is not the run either of those guys were looking for. Dun Savage still managed to salvage something in spite of the problem he had. He took off to the right, but you can see they're gonna have to do a little bit of reconstruction down here on the track as uh, Dunsavage did kick a cone but did not technically run out of bounds. We do know Cruz 
will DQ as he uh, flat out ran over the timing system. Still got a time because he ran over it with the rear tire. He ran a uh, 283. Dun Savage ran a 242. But watch again under the light, the left of your screen. Watch Cruz. Both of them made a hard right. Dun Savage was able to salvage the run. Cruz had to get out of the throttle, and I think just kept coming right just enough to run over that timing reflector. And uh, that would be a disqualification for him. Now, Shane Olrogi being staged by the man who now owns this car, Greg Martinez. This was Shane's ride for uh, several years now, won many a championship with it, so we know he's capable of doing that again as he is leading the points coming into this weekend. And another racing in the dirt build across from him. Another car Shane had his hands on that's looking for trouble. That is Daniel Kerher out of Nebraska. 632 cubic inch Tony Bischoff Ford engine in that one next to a 760 cubic inch Goodwin. Competition race engine and a big fire on the left hand side of the track. Orogi will take the top spot with a 230 with a six. Garrett running a 346, but I don't believe he's going to be coming back as he had a massive fireball at about the uh, 60 foot mark. He is rolled to a stop and they're gonna go fetch him off of the end of the track, but a big time problem there for looking for trouble. It looked like he may have ejected some material out of that engine. We'll get another look at it here in just a moment, but watch. Coming off the line, Olrogi laying down the new fast time. Lights the candles. Taking it straight down the track. That was a beautiful run. For Greg Martinez's scream too, but right there you see. Watch again out of the left-hand side of that engine. A little ejection and then a big ejection. In fact, there was a little piece of material looked like came out of the headers right before the fireball. I'm not sure what that was, but something definitely came out of that engine. Now, Joel Coolidge out of Two Harbors, Minnesota, driving kryptonite, another racing in the dirt built machine. 612 cubic inch Keith Black Oldsmobile engine. Seen a couple of these in the monster truck uh, division lately. And, uh, Kind of a nice to see the reemergence of this power plant. A very, very solid power plant if you get it tuned right. And these guys seem to have figured this one out as well. Brand new machine for this year, but it looks like it's coming around. Three kits of nitrous on this thing. Power Glide transmission rated at 1,500 horsepower. trouble there uh, just about 80 feet out but runs a 259 not bad for a little bobble on the run so Coolidge definitely staying in the conversation here's a look at the top five right now Shane Rogie leading the pack just over Rick George which is what he needs to do here this weekend we'll see if he can hold out for uh, session number two when these guys re-rack him and come back Caleb Dunn Savage Joel Coolidge and Gene Cruz rounding out the top five at this moment. So, Orogi and George continuing to battle for that number one spot. We'll see what happens when they come back to the line. When we come back, we'll be bringing the open class to the timing lights. Stay with us. This Back Channel Productions program is brought to you in part by RPM Army, the place to get your motorsports fix. The world famous C60 Cyclops. The infamous Dodge Carry All, unnamed and untamed. Get yourself a one of a kind toy of a mud bogger turned monster truck at FreedomRacingMT.com. Back Channel Productions has been your home for the 2023 MRA Championship Series, wrapping things up here at Finals Weekend outside of Steelville, Missouri. The Kelly O'Dell Open Cuts about to hit the track, and you can see Kevin Harrison en route to a second straight championship. Scott Snarsky here this weekend, gonna try to maybe gain a few points on him, but it may be for not as he's tied with Jim Ingram. Steve Renan and Billy Fling, who is now out for the season, rounding out the top five. I do have to say though, in spite of Billy not being here, it was good to see his uh, brother Dale out uh, helping with things in the pits this weekend, making sure everybody hangs in there. Now a new ride to us, now not a new vehicle, I should say. We've seen this vehicle here before. In fact, this thing almost ended up on its top last time it was here. This is Steve Anderson out of uh, St. Albert, Alberta, north of the border, drove 30 hours to make this event in the Danish Dragon, a 500 plus cubic inch Brad Anderson, Emmy, Jim Lamb built chassis, 
Sponsored by Anderson Drywall, Pacific Western Supply, Specialty Truck, and Off-Road. All out of Edmonton, Alberta. Let's see what Steve Anderson has for the MRA Elite. Hope to see him more next year. This thing is super loud and it should be super quick. Got a little sideways there coming out. Still runs a 244. Looking for a little more, but not bad on a track that, again, has been very temperamental this weekend. And if anybody is going to test the limits of this uh, clay-filled soil here this weekend, it is going to be the open class. Instant horsepower. Steve Anderson not looking bad right now here in the open class. Again, a lot of movement. Hard to see with that uh, big uh, LED light bar off the front, but he needs that when you get down to the dark end zone. Now, Jim Ingram out of Simonton, Texas, minus the wing. First time we've seen this vehicle like that this year. This is bad trouble three. Another screw blown 500 plus cubic inch Emmy power plant. Ingram and company, uh, not the lone Texan in the field this weekend. We'll see uh, Mark Riggin out here in uh, just a little bit in another bad habit. But this is a guy I believe could also be on his way to a championship in 2024. We'll see what he has as he comes into stage. Awesome, awesome machine that can definitely get down in that record territory. Let's see what Ingram's got. Big problem, and he makes hard contact with the wall and takes some material with him. Undoubtedly did some damage on that run. As you see, the uh, right rear is blown out. It looks like he may have damaged the right front as well. Got a little wobble in that rim, but the right rear is definitely, definitely done for, and I don't think he's going to be back tonight. Hopefully, he did not just knock himself out for the season because they have the paddle tire championship to dispute later on. You can see the uh, track group, Brendan Bidlack, in fact, headed down there to give uh, Ingram a hand and help clean up a little bit of the mess that was just made. But man, what a hit to this uh, right side wall. Look at that, bang, right into it. Takes the cone, the timing, equipment, the banners, everything with him. But that's the least of his concerns right now because he has definitely done some major damage to the uh, right side of that vehicle. One more time, you can see, picked the front end up just a little bit when he set it down. Man, it came around him. It's not the first time this weekend that we have seen a vehicle make a hard move to this uh, right-hand side of the track, but first time we've seen one make hard contact with that concrete, and right there shows you why you do not want to get anywhere near those concrete barriers. However, they are keeping these cars out of the pit area, so they're designed to do but uh, it, it did look like Ingram tried to let out, to his credit, and that vehicle just headed that way. It's, it's an on-off switch with that throttle pedal, and once you start feeding those motors, they do not like to uh, go down without a fight as uh, Brendan Bidlack hauls that ripped-up MRA banner back toward the top end of the track, toward the tent. We're going to bring out our next vehicle, Steve Renaud, who has to run in the lane of the man who just hit the wall in front of him out of Hornpain, Ontario, Renaud guy looking for maybe a championship next year but he's had a great season so far the chief uh, Gary Baker alongside him 526 cubic inch Noonan power plant in this one to change horsepower this year and a uh, Bidlack racing chassis very similar build to the man who's now on top this is uh, Brendan Kinsella out of Danbury Connecticut he made a move up from the modified division into this open class here with uh, pure fury See what he has for Steve Renaud. Renaud, a guy who can definitely get down in that record territory. See if this is his weekend. He is not where he wants to be right now, especially having watched Ingram just had his troubles in that lane. Managed to keep it pretty much down center. It was walking on a little bit. Look at that, a 239 for Renaud. 252 for Kinsella with a little bit of smoke out of what looked like the left side of that power plant, but not a bad run for either of those big, bad, blown machines. One from north of the border, one from the northeastern United States. You can see Kinsella pedaling a little bit right there. Really getting bounced around in the shutdown area when they get out of the throttle. One more look at it from down here, and you'll see 
Look at Renaud keeping it as down the center as he can. He made a harder move to the left than I thought he did, but heads up driving with a man out of Hornbane, Ontario. As your points leader and projected champion now, Kevin Harrison, looking toward a second championship on this series in this class. Out of Grenada, Mississippi. Never enough. Eric Bidlack built machine. Record holder in the class. Going side by side with Mark Riggin out of Lockhart, Texas. Again, lining up in the dreaded right lane. Here in Steelville, Riggin. One of the wild men in the sport. He will not let out no matter the circumstances. We've seen him walk that thing on the rear tires before. This could be a wild one. Pick your favorite. Red light for Harrison and Riggin runs a 281. Neither of those guys getting what they wanted out of that one. It looked like Harrison got bucked around there in the shutdown area quite a bit. Watch it one more time. All right, we're hearing that there's a red light. I'm not seeing a red light on this run, but that's the indication that we were given. It looks like he just got out of bounds there. I'm not sure if we got a bad reel, but look at him bouncing around down there in the shutdown and Riggin, of course, having to drive that thing around and hurt his time big time. You're talking about two guys who could definitely do some damage to uh, anybody's uh, hopes of taking the purse out of here tonight. Another racing of the dirt built machine rolling up. That's uh, Tyler Coolidge in Nightmare 6. Second generation driver with his father staging him up alongside another second generation driver with his father staging him up. That's Travis Shoemaker out of the Keystone State in high roller four. Seen this guy pick up some wins in the modified division. In fact, a class four action in both the paddle and cut tire divisions out in uh, Indianapolis, Indiana in 2019 at the uh, Jamboree. We saw him win both cut and paddle tire classes with the uh, big 800 plus cubic inch engine with nitrous now in the blower motor open glass let's see what he does had kind of a rough year cool it's having to work for a living it shut down a 241 look at that shoemaker runs a 225 Travis Shoemaker going to the number one spot convincingly. A beautiful pass out of what's been the bad lane. And look at Tyler Coolidge. On the verge of being out of control. You talk about a gutsy racer now. Greg Monsmith out of Warsaw, Indiana. The Hoosier hater right here on the line. We're ready to roll. Good to see Greg back out here racing. He had a rough 2023. He has had engine problems for the past two years. It seemed to just... Put him flat on his face. He did not let him shut him down. Now Scott Snarsky now rolls on next to him. Another legend in the sport out of Libertyville, Illinois, being staged by his co-driver and co-owner, Paul Westinger, who will see drive this vehicle tomorrow. Talk about a guy with plenty of horsepower to spare. Big Boss Ford race engine in that one. 540 cubic inches with a one-speed transmission and a three-disc slipper clutch. Side by side with Greg Monsmith, 520 cube against Brad Anderson Hemi with an 1871 roots blower on top. Going after Shoemaker, not gonna do it. A 238 for Snarsky again out of the bad lane, not doing too bad. Maybe it's coming around as he's winking at us here in shutdown. That right front headlight going out on him, but. Two awesome machines in the class. Making nice, safe passes, and right now that's all you can hope for after some of the action we have seen so far this weekend. Watch him again, though. Mon Smith moving, both of them moving around quite a bit in their respective lanes. You can see Snarsky coming off to the his right, your left. Here as uh, we will look at the current standings, the top five right now. Travis Shoemaker leading the pack by a mile with a 225. Again, out of that dreaded right lane. Scott Snarsky in second out of the right lane with a 238. And again, 
Right lane, uh, not uh, singing the blues so far. Steve Renaud in third with a 239. Then it's Tyler Coolidge and Steve Anderson, who both made runs out of the left lane, sitting in fourth and fifth. So they're all trying to spoil the party for Kevin Harrison. We'll see what they have when they come back for session two. The mods return to the track when we come back to Steelville. Stay with us. Temperatures are very nice, but you can see the fog is rolling in across the pasture here tonight at the Upper Merrimack Dirt Drags just outside of Steelville, Missouri, technically in Cook Station. Great people and uh, great racing out here this weekend. Always great. Feels like you're in the middle of nowhere, but it feels like you're home. A lot of hospitality out of the Booker family. If you ever get a chance to see this event live, you got to put the cell phone away, come out and just watch the action countryside. High horsepower, dirt drag racing here, and uh, you saw Joel Coolidge there in Kryptonite alongside uh, Greg Martinez's Scream with uh, Shane Olrogi at the wheel. The builder of this vehicle, guy leading the points into this weekend, we'll see what he has for uh, Joel Coolidge again. That uh, Scream machine has won championships, many a championship with Shane at the wheel. He could do it again right here as uh, he comes in uh, shooting at his own time of a 2-3-0, leading the pack. See what Coolidge has here in session two. Ran a 2.59 in session run one, runs a 2.42. O'Rogi not going to better his own time at 2.37, so the 2.30 two, uh, two will stay on top for the Greg Martinez own scream out of uh, Las Vegas, New Mexico, being piloted by the uh, chassis builder out of Wisconsin. Not a bad run at all for O'Rogi, but uh, somehow he put one together in this right-hand lane, and it worked for him. Coolidge not looking too bad, though, as a legendary machine in the sport, Caleb Dunn Savage. His father, his brother, the family out here this weekend out of uh, the volunteer state of Tennessee and Color Me Gone. And there you see Gene Cruz, bad intentions out of Richmond, Kentucky. Joe Wizard Curtis Chassis, uh, sponsored by Cruz Excavating. See, either of these guys can get around Olrogi. Again, 2 3 0 with a 6 is what they're shooting for. With an eight. Look at that. Cruz runs a 2 3 0 with a 9. Not going to jump over Old Rogi, but they are closing in on him right now. A couple of heavy hitters are going to be coming up to the line in just a moment. What a ride, though, for Dunn Savage. Man. If the fog weren't so bad on the other end of the track, we could show you how far he moved over to the right without going out of bounds, but you wouldn't be able to see it. It, the fog is so thick from that end of the field. It's actually not bad right here where we are. Everything is starting to get a layer of dew on top of it, and there's already a lot of moisture in this track. So I'm wondering, wondering if that moisture is starting to come up to the top. It's not laying down the bottom so much. There's a good illustration right there. You cannot really see either of those machines on the starting line, but they are there. This is the kind of fog we usually get by the end of the night in Gore Springs. It's a uh, pea soup thick, though. These guys come to the line. Let's see. Rick George shooting for the number one spot, trying to get that points lead and the championship. Can he jump over Old Rogi? Solid runs from both of those guys. Look, they both did it. George with a 224 with a 5 and a 229 out of Mitchell. So both of them will jump over. The Shane Old Rogi prepared Greg Martinez scream out of New Mexico. The Georgia-based racing in the dirt machine, beating the 
builder of his own chassis there and the Keystone Killer not looking too bad here in session two. All right. Uh, 2.29 at the end of the night, and that track was hard to get a hold of. Yes, it was, everybody. Uh, we were, we're very fortunate after struggling the first pass to come back and recoup, and we'll take second place after. I just wanted to get a good, clean pass, and 60-foot uh, time was great. And whew, Yeah, I'm just happy uh, we got down the track and went well. This, this thing's finally coming around for you. These guys built you a heck of a chassis. Yeah, they did. We, we struggled with it earlier on, had some motor issues, and then had electrical issues, and then finally worked through them. It's beginning to be pretty good. All right. Well, big thanks to those guys. Few minor audio issues there. We apologize, but uh, Rick George doesn't know it yet, but he has claimed the championship in his first year at the wheel of one of these mods. Now, they're not new to this sport. Those guys have been around for a while, but you see, he just barely jumped over Shane Rogie. Did it when he needed to do it, and we take a look at the uh, bottom three in the points. Gene Cruz, Daniel Kerr, and Jason Massey, who only ran, I believe, one event this season. But uh, got to be proud of it. Our congratulations to Rick George. Came out with a little bit of a struggle. Brand new vehicle, but jumps to the number one spot. Stay with us. The open class back on the line when we come back to Steelville, Missouri. Hey, welcome to Wild Man Adventures. For the Silver Lake Sand Dragway. There really wasn't any off-roading back then. It was all off-road. We're on our way to Lima, Ohio. Got wood wheels. Oh, it's slippery. It's all good, Alex. Hey, we're here with Rich Cummins. Hey, we're here with Mike Potter. Hey, we're here with Alan Pizzo. Gotta check it out. This week we're going to go down memory lane. Back in the show me state as the fog has uh, thinned out a little bit. We're getting ready for the open glass. Might be able to use this end zone camera now. <laughs> See how far out of whack these guys do get. And it's Man, it's great to actually have this angle and you can see how far out of shape these guys will get on a good run. See really how far out of shape they've gotten on some of these runs that weren't so good. Travis Shoemaker leading the charge right now over uh, Scott Snarsky, Steve Renaud, Tyler Coolidge, and Steve Anderson. And you got to tip your hat, by the way, to uh, Shoemaker, Snarsky, and Renaud getting uh, top times out of what has been the bad lane. Now they're going to go over to the good lane, or what has been the good lane, see what they can do over there. I'm interested to see how much quicker they'll go on that side as Greg Monsmith rolls out. And uh, some of this timing equipment is his, and a few of these guys just got an earful about uh, running over his reflectors <laughs> and his timing equipment. So. And Greg knows the value of, of a good timing system. And uh, he'd certainly not like to have to replace uh, another set of clocks right here at the finals like he did last year. I won't say who ran over his timing equipment, but a couple guys wiped out the clocks both nights of action last year. So far, it's just been reflectors. Nobody's actually taking, taken out the clocks as uh, Scott Starsky pulls up on the left-hand side, really pumping a lot of fuel through that engine. Let's see, a Paperboy Express can hang in the number two spot here in the championship. Well, Greg didn't follow his own directions. He just ran over one of his reflectors. 235 out of Snarsky, not bad at all. And Greg Monsman's gonna go back to the pit area and beat himself up a little bit because now they've got some track construction to do and he's down a little bit of timing equipment so <laughs> see the mess he made right there man this this right hand lane is causing so many problems and i'll tell you what this is a track you gotta really 
tip of the hat to Greg Booker and company. They want this to be a record-breaking track. They're doing everything they can to do that with the moisture that's in the dirt this weekend. It seems like it might actually be hurting these guys. The clay is there, the bite is there, but you can see it might be just too much. They're breaking loose after they get traction. An awesome bite off the starting line, and then once they get going, it looks like they're breaking loose and uh, it's slinging these guys right and left hard right there, but he stayed out of the wall, thank goodness, because we saw earlier with Ingram in Bad Trouble 3 what can happen when you make hard contact with that wall. And you see Jamie Suter <laughs> picking, up some, uh, picking up some pieces of uh, broken luck there, Greg Monsmith, saying, what do you want me to do with this junk? This is a couple moments ago. They've got to reset. Back on the line now. With, uh, back on the line with a couple second generation drivers and their fathers. Saw Tyler Coolidge at the wheel of uh, Nightmare 6. Joel Coolidge's father getting him lined up. And there you see High Roller 4, Travis and his father, Neil Shoemaker. And by the way, you're talking about generations, the father of both of these teams. Talk about wild rides in this sport. Those are two guys that have quite a few of them in their past. Let's see what the second generation has for the elite. Cool is wiping out the clocks. Hold on to it, Tyler, almost into the hay bales. A 223 for Shoemaker will put him on top, but Tyler Coolidge almost did not make it out of this session. Wiped out the timing lights at the end of the track. In fact, he wiped out the, the timing lights proper, not reflectors. He took out the center timing system. Look at that, right across it. And then, very good driving at the end of that to keep it out of the bales and keep it on all four wheels. Watch again, hard right turn. Actually, I'm sorry, hard left turn across the center of the track. Does not get into the other driver's lane. Managed to keep it on the center of the track uh, going out of bounds. And then in the process of the evasive driving ended up all the way on the right side up against these hay bales. And that would have been a nasty mess to clean up. Thank goodness he stayed off of those bales. Again, great piece of driving in spite of what happened by Tyler Coolidge. And once again, Brendan Bidlack picking up some uh, torn up banners. While riding the second session, there is nothing in that right no. hand lane. <laughs> I had my hands full, but yeah, the track happens. The track wasn't the greatest, so. You're looking at uh, hay bales when your visor flipped up? Yeah, yeah like, I don't know how close I got, but I got pretty damn close. Yeah, you, uh, you sent one of the flag poles about 200 yards <laughs> on the track. Well, I did some body work on the car, too, so. Uh, you'll be back tomorrow. Yeah, we'll so. be back tomorrow. I uh, got a little work to do for tomorrow, but uh, you can see right there, he said they're going to have a little body work to do. <laughs> like, bent up uh, the nose sheet metal on that uh, racing in the dirt machine. Now, uh, track crew having to clean up a little bit of timing equipment. This was not supposed to take place until the end, but we have a little something special for you here this weekend. Local hero, Tim Jones in the tailgater. Only lives about 30, 40 minutes away. One of the wildest men in monster trucks coming out to do a little bit of freestyle in front of this awesome crowd here at the Upper Merrimack Dirt Drags uh, over there on the side while the uh, track crew tends to the damaged timing system. See what Tim uh, can do here for the crowd as they wait. Keeping them entertained here at the Upper Merrimack Dirt Drags. And don't worry, he's nowhere near, by the way, those people not center drag. Way down in this end. We do have an RAI on it. Safety first here with the MRA. Textbook slap wheelie. Guy who can do just about anything you've ever wanted to do with one of these trucks. He's got this thing set up so it looks like it hits a ton, but it lands like a pillow. Look at this. One of the best setup trucks in the business. Although, there are certain drivers that have jumped in behind the wheel of this machine that have driven for years and say it's one of the most confusing trucks they've ever driven. But uh, Tim can put on a show with it.
kicking up some load down there in the shutdown area. He's not driving across the uh, drag track proper, thank goodness. They would not be happy unless a big monster truck crashed through the shutdown area. A couple guys airborne, but uh, saw Tim uh, take a freestyle victory out at uh, Mount Pleasant Resort and Casino at Monster Truck Madness uh, 9. Part of the Monster Truck Throwdown Tour earlier this year, and uh, uh, one of these guys, man, if he's in town anywhere close to you, you got to get tickets to see him. And uh, Tim Jones, big surprise for uh, the fans out here this weekend. He'll be here getting big hang time with the slap wheelies, the donuts, all of it here all weekend long. Just a little freestyle for the crowd when they correct the. Uh, timing system that Tyler Coolidge just wiped out and I know he feels really really bad about that not uh, not something he does normally but this track has just been so tough on everybody here this weekend Tim Jones gonna bring it to a stop big thanks to him big thanks to uh, the uh, Boniker family for helping get Tim out here this weekend along with Greg Booker Again, from right down the road, they could not invite him to put on a little show for the crowd. Now, as we are back to championship racing, Mark Riggin pulling to the line in another bad habit. Out of Lockhart, Texas. Bullet racing chassis with a 526 cubic inch Hemi power plant. Sponsored by his wife Stephanie Riggin alongside the never enough entry of Kevin Harrison out of Grenada, Mississippi. Really the projected champion, even though he's had a rough night so far. It'd be almost impossible to eclipse this guy in points. He has just had such a good season with that screw blown 527 cubic inch Noonan race engine. It's that Aussie horsepower built by Ohio's Eric Bidlack, who you see staging him right now. See if Mark Reagan and Kevin Harrison can both better what they did in the uh, first session. Remember, Harrison ran out of bounds. Reagan had a pedal fast over here on the right-hand side of the track. Better run by far for Mark Reagan. Kevin Harrison, something going wrong, runs an 8.82. Well, forget that time. He will walk out of here with the championship. You can see he is having some engine problems. Hopefully nothing that will put him out of competition because he still has another championship to defend. But both of those guys looking for a better night tomorrow in the paddle tire division. And uh, they're going to be working this track, I can tell you that, to uh, try to get it to take a lot more horsepower than it is right now. This is a good track. This is a safe track. But uh, tonight, this right lane has been biting everybody as the See Brendan Kinsella out of Connecticut now in Pure Fury. Again, very similar machine to the one you just saw Kevin Harrison drive off the track. Another Bidlack built uh, Emmy machine side by side with another Noonan powered machine on the far side there being Steve Renaud and Frantic. It's staged up right now. Again, a couple guys here you might see in the championship range next year here on the MRA Championship Series. See if Kinsella can hang in there in that right lane. Again, it's been troublesome all night long. Steve Renaud had a great run over there. Renaud with a 214 with a 7. Kinsella 236 with problem. Engine did not sound perfect and he still runs a good time. Steve Renaud though going to the number one spot with a 21472. Betters a 2390 from the first session. Kinsella bettering his own time as well. He ran a 252. Runs not bad here in, again, what they're calling the bad lane. And we got one more coming up to stage as the fog is really, really starting to roll in again. Steve Anderson. Turning on the fog lamp there as he comes into stage. The Danish Dragon out of St. Albert, Alberta. Again, two guys north of the border here, and uh, two guys I'm interested to see what they're able to do in 2024. But uh, Anderson giving us some good shots here in uh, the tail end of the 2023 season. A lot of vapor out of that motor. Look at that, a 222 for Anderson. 
will go into the number two spot. So it's an all Canadian first and second. Top of the field belongs north of the border here in the open cut class. at finals weekend at the upper Merrimack Dirt Drags. And we're gonna take a look at the uh, final standings. What a run for Steve Anderson. Here's a look at the final time. Steve Renaud, a 2.14, way out front of the class here this weekend. And then Anderson, again, out of bad lane, 2.22. And again, 2.23 for Travis Shoemaker. And that was alongside that uh, that uh, wild running Tyler Coolidge, then Mark Riggin and Scott Snarsky rounding out the top five. And that will hold Snarsky, I believe, firmly into that number two spot as we look at the uh, final standings in the Kelly O'Dell Open Cuts class. Kevin Harrison leading the charge again. I said it was going to be impossible to knock him out of there even with the bad run he had here this weekend. Unfortunately, that's a machine that normally goes quick. Scott Snarsky, Steve Renaud, Jim Ingram, and Mark Riggin, the Texans, round out the top five here in the uh, Kelly O'Dell Open Cuts and the uh, bottom five of the top ten. Billy Fling, who had a shot at the top five till he popped a motor last time out in Mississippi. Big time pop, big expensive uh, engine explosion. Tyler Coolidge, Travis Shoemaker, Jim Lamb, who's no longer running this uh, sport, and Greg Monsmith round out the top 10. A congratulations for the second straight year to Kevin Harrison for taking the Kelly O'Dell Open Cuts class championship here with the MRA. Congratulations to the three champions we've crowned already. we got more action coming for you next time. Don't miss it.